My name's Marty, and today we're going to be talking about shielding electric guitars. So you may not be able to hear this through the camera, but on the bench there, I've got a small practice amp. The guitar's plugged into that, and the minute I turn on my two big lights today for filming, I'm starting to hear interference coming through the amp. And that's known as EMI, or electromagnetic interference, and that comes from your mains power. So you may also hear this referred to as 60 cycle hum, because your mains power alternates at 60 hertz. Now what happens is, your guitars with single coil or P90 style pickups, the pickups work like antenna and are susceptible to EMI. It's less of a problem with guitars with humbuckers, just the way they're wired, a lot of that interference is sent directly to ground. But in the case of guitars with single coil pickups or P90 style pickups, they can be noisier and that's, that's the reason it's EMI or electromagnetic interference. So the way to combat that is to shield the pickup cavity and we'll also shield the underside of the pickguard. This is a relatively simple job, really doesn't take any experience or skills. You really just need a good sharp pair of scissors and some copper shielding tape, which you can buy off eBay fairly inexpensively. So I'm gonna show you how to do that. I'm gonna pop the guitar up on the bench and we're gonna shield the cavity and the underside of the pick guard in this guitar. Okay, so I've got the guitar up on the bench now. And the first thing we really need to do is remove this pick guard. But uh, what I would also recommend is just taking a, taking a flat screwdriver like this and just gently getting these um, tone and volume caps off. Now you really just want to do this very evenly. These are um, quite fragile on the edges. So just take your time. Eventually, you'll, you'll be able to work them off. Get this one coming now. Now, if your guitar has um, steel, steel, steel knobs, you also have to take a, a fine screwdriver and just undo the little screw in the sides, which is usually used to fasten those on. The other thing I do is remove the the pickup selector uh, button, and from there you can start unscrewing the pickup. Now I'd recommend just having a small container in there just to make sure you keep track of all the different screws we're going to be removing today. It's up to you. I generally leave a couple of screws in just before I completely remove it. You can also do this first, obviously. And I would also take off the back of the guitar. Now this is an S-style guitar, so if you're doing this on a Les Paul Jr. or a guitar with a different configuration. Essentially what we're trying to do is shield the, uh, the cavities, the pickup cavities and control cavities. So your, your guitar may be slightly different to this, but the same principles apply. So the first thing I wanna do is just cut that ground line I'm going to just snip that off close to the base here. Obviously using a soldering iron would be tidier, but for the sake of convenience, I'm just going to snip this off and sort it out later. Okay, I'm gonna flip the guitar over, just remove these two last screws. The pick guard straight out. And there should be sufficient wire for that to just sit off to the side. Now as explained, what we're trying to do here is shield the internal cavities of the guitar. So we've got copper shielding tape here. You can get this fairly inexpensively on eBay. This is 50 mil wide. This will this, this size roll will do a few guitars. Uh, you can get something smaller if you're just doing the one. What we're trying to do is basically line the internal cavities and also we'll be lining the underside of the pick guard. You can see on the pick guard we have a small amount of foil or foil tape here, which is just around the controls, and it's it's predominantly there for that reason. But essentially, if we can cover the whole the whole pick guard, we'll be in much better shape. So the first thing we're going to do is start removing some of these screws, so I can remove some of those pots. The easiest way to do that is just sit the pick guard back down. Now, you will need a uh, a spanner or something similar. This um, this Music Nomad multi-purpose tool is particularly good for this sort of thing.
attached to my game tire. And so I have control assembly, I'll just move that off to the side. Okay, so as discussed, essentially what we're doing is lining the inside of this control cavity with our copper tape. Now some people also choose to line the output jack cavity as well. I tend to think this is far less um, necessary. In fact, in my opinion, it's the pickups really that are the problem. They're, they're, the, they're the things that are susceptible to the interference. The short amount of wire within the output jack really isn't going to cause a problem. In, in most cases, I would doubt that anyone would even really hear a difference, to be honest. So up to you, that's optional. I tend not to bother, but if you are going to do that, just make sure, make sure you connect the two. So you can either run some wire through and solder directly onto the copper shielding tape, or if you're fortunate enough to have um, braided uh, ground wire, for example, then that should, um, that should do the job for you anyway. Okay, so the first thing I would do is just cut approximate lengths of the tape, and you just wanna make sure you've got good sharp scissors. And the other thing I would do, obviously first too, is just clean out the cavity. I'm just using some compressed air for that. Um, another trick you can use is some masking tape, where you just apply the masking tape directly to, to the cavity itself, the bottom, lift it up, and that should remove any dust or residue. It's, it's all we're really trying to do is just create a clean surface so our tape adheres nicely to the, uh, to the wood. And from there, really, all you need to do is just start lining the, the cavity itself. Now, a couple of things to keep in mind when doing this. It's really important that you don't leave any bare, bare spots. You need every bit of wire, that you, every bit of tape you put in here to overlap. You can test this using a multimeter. For example, once, once you're installed, you just should test two separate points and just make sure you've got connectivity. That will tell you that, um, that all your tape is connected. And the other thing I'd recommend doing as well, which we'll discuss more as we get to it, is to slightly overlap, slightly overlap the, um, the pickup cavities. So it should just, just sit slightly outside. And the reason we do that, when we also apply our tape to the underside of our pick guard, the two will, will be connected and, and essentially what you have there is what's known as a Faraday cage. Although it's not completely true because the top of the pickups are still exposed. But um, that's why we can't eliminate the, uh, the noise completely, but we can reduce it significantly. Okay, so I'm just, just leaving enough around the top just to make sure I've got some overlap there. Pick guard will obviously cover this up, so it won't be a problem. Just make sure it's nice and tidy and flat, at least as tidy as you can make it. So I'm just making sure we've got plenty of overlap there. We really want that all the tape to, to connect in the cavity, leave no bare spots. I'm just working my way around that wire there as well. Now I'll speed the video up from here. It's obviously going to be a little boring watching someone just um, just line the inside of a cavity like this. But that's essentially what we do. We cut small sections, we lay it down, get the bulk of the uh, cavity covered, and then come back and using smaller sections. As you can see, I've got some smaller sections here from a previous job. We use those just to cover up some of the bare spots.
Okay, so that should be our pickup cavity now sorted. So what I'd recommend from here, just take a close look, make sure there's no gaps anywhere. And as I said before, you can test this using a multimeter. Just hold your two ends, and just make sure there's connectivity between any two points. And um, that's really all there is to it. Now, as I said before too, if you do want to shield the upper jack, that's fine, you can do it. As I said, it, it probably won't make a discernible difference, but if you do, just make sure you connect the two up. So you can run some, some of this um, shielding tape, a small section of it through the hole. We use wire and solder directly onto the uh, onto the shielding. But as I said before, in most cases, you're not going to really hear, hear a difference. Okay, so moving on, we will now start looking at our pick guard. Now, as I said before, we overlay the shielding tape so that we can create a connection between the pick guard and the cavity. And you can see we've already got some shielding tape in place here, but we'll be covering a larger section. You don't need to go right to the edge. Um, there's no point really. As I said, we're trying to connect here, so we're shielding just this section here. Having said that, a lot of people do, and it's often a tidier way to do it because you can then work with the edge and have a nice tidy, uh, tidy job. So as before with the, with the cavity, what I would do is start with large sections first. And I'd probably work fairly close to the edge, but, um, but not completely. As I said, there's really no need. And I'll be going straight over the holes as well. It's much easier just to cut those out at the end. So from here you can see we've covered up the entire underside of the pick guard. I've just cut away that excess using a sharp blade and when we put the pick guard back in as you can see that shielding tape is going to connect so what we've overlapped the cavities will connect directly to this and that will create that that Faraday cage we talked about earlier. And from here it's pretty simple all we need to do is reinstall our electronics put the pick guard back on and reattach that ground wire and our guitar will be good to go. Now if you've got a P90 or single coil electric guitar kit, I would recommend doing this as part of the assembly. It will cut down on potential interference from EMI. Okay, so I hope that helps.